Hi friends, this is Amanda and my dog Ernie. Say hi Ernie. That's my dog. He is one and a half years old and all he wants me to do right now is play with his favorite ball. But first, before I play with Ernie, we are going to read a book for this week. Um, I'm really excited about this book. It's called Ellen's Broom. And the reason why I chose this book was because the author is from Raleigh. Um, she lives here, well, actually, I'm not sure if she lives in Raleigh, but she's from North Carolina. And her name is Kelly Starling Lyons. Um, so I heard about this book actually on the radio um, since she lives close to us. And I was really excited um, to pick it out and read it together. So here we go. This week's book um, called Ellen's Broom by Kelly Starling Lyons and illustrated by Daniel Minter. Sunday morning, Ellen sat on the front pew with her family. She wiggled on the wooden seat trying to get comfortable, but she knew not to say a word. Her people no longer had to worship at the back of the master's church or sneak to the woods for prayer meetings. Slavery days were over. They had so much to be thankful for. Ellen heard something new in the voices that swelled the church built by her own with song. They were free. Joy filled her heart. Just then, Deacon stood to speak. He clutched a paper and raised it to heaven. To God be the glory, he roared. All former slaves living as husband and wife shall be registered and seen as married in the eyes of the law. All over the church, people leapt to their feet. Ellen did too. She understood only a little of what the preacher said, but she knew it was good. Her mother's eyes brimmed with tears. Her papa's eyes clapped like thunder. Back home in their cabin, Ellen's parents walked over to the broom hanging on the wall. Mama always said it was part of the family, a witness to the way things were. She told the broom story over and over so they would never forget what they survived. Ruby and Reuben, Mama asked the twins, do you know what this broom was for? Weddings, Mama, Reuben answered quickly. That's right, Mama said. And broom weddings were all most slaves were allowed to have. Before freedom came, the law wasn't on our side, Papa told them. Husbands and wives could be ripped apart, sold away at any time. It didn't matter if they cried or even begged to stay together. Master had the final say. As Ellen thought about her parents' words, she tried to imagine life without them. Her eyes burned and her heart ached. That's not right, she said, shaking her head and trying to clear the image from her mind. But we did the best we could with what we had, Papa said. Deacon said a few words, and he, we put this here broom on the ground, held hands, and leaped into life together. We were married in our hearts and in God's eyes, Mama said, but we had no way to show it. That's all changed now. We can be married legal, just like anybody else. A couple weeks later, when the sun peeked its rosy head into the sky, Mama said it was time for the journey. Ellen washed and dressed quickly. Ruby grinned and carried baby Noah on her hip. Reuben toted a sack with food. Mama took down the broom and handed it to Ellen. This broom was here from the start, so it should come along too, don't you think? She said with a wink. Ellen felt her chest puff with pride. She smiled and clutched the broom tight. As they walked to the courthouse, people from church going for the same reason joined them. 
Ellen looked around at the parade of strutting families and her parents holding hands. She listened to the sweet laughter and song sailing in the air. She held the broom high. They stopped at a beautiful building near a row of flowers. Papa bowed his head and gave, gave thanks that they arrived safely. Ellen's eyes grew large as they stepped inside. A Freedmen's Bureau officer interviewed a couple in the line in front of them. He wrote the man's and lady's names on a special register. Ruby said they were already married, but being part of that record was proof that they were legal husband and wife. Ellen looked at the woman's pretty dress and at her mama's plain one made of homemade homespun cotton. She grabbed Ruby's arm and hurried her out of the room. Where are you taking me, Ellen? Her big sister asked. I have an idea, Ellen said her, as her eyes twinkled. Did you see that patch of flowers outside? Ruby nodded and a smile stretched across her face. The sisters ran out and carefully plucked some flowers. Then they weaved them through the straw until the broom was decorated with blooms of red and pink. In the courthouse, Ellen handed the broom to Mama, flower side up. Her mother's eyes filled with tears. What's wrong, Mama? Ellen asked, worried she had done something bad. Nothing, baby, she said. Everything is just right. The man added Papa and Mama's names to the register. Then he asked them for the year they started living together as husband and wife and the names and ages of their children. Ellen grinned when Papa said hers. When the man finished writing, he explained that Mama and Papa were married in the eyes of God and the law. He handed them a certificate to take home. Papa kissed Mama and whirled her in the air like a new bride. On the way home, the family stopped for lunch beneath a shade tree. Ellen picked up the broom and laid it in front of her parents. I want to see you jump the, room, the broom. Please, can you? Papa frowned. Broom jumping is the past a little bit. We're married official. Please, Papa, Ellen said. Mama always said the broom is part of us, too. Papa's right, Mama said. The broom is the past. Ellen hung her head. But you're right, too, Mama said. It will always be part of who we are. Come on, Papa. Let's show these young folks how it's done. When I get married one day, I'm going to jump the broom, too, Ellen said. Papa hesitated, then grinned. That would be fine, little bit, he said. Mighty fine. When they returned to their cabin, Mama looked at the bare wall and then Ellen. That wall sure could use some fixing up, she said. Ellen knew just what it needed. As the last rays of light warmed the room, she smiled and hung up the certificate and the broom together. The end. Well, that was a great story that I really enjoyed. I um, have seen that it, sometimes at people's weddings, when they get married, they will jump over a broom. And I never really understood why, but thanks to this book, um, we know the importance of jumping the broom um, for African-American families, and especially when they celebrate getting married on a special day. So I hope you enjoyed this book. Um, I hope you have a good night of sleep, and I will see you again soon for another story. Bye, friends.